Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm happy to have the opportunity to speak to the World Up General Assembly 2020. My name is Darko Ratke and I work for the European Broadcasting Union. And uh, my presentation will be about our understanding of what 5G is and what 5G can bring to the media sector. Its origin is an ambition by the, uh, by the global governments, by the, by the regulators, to uh, put in place technology that can do many different things as they did in the past for the third generation and the fourth generation. Now they're for the fourth, fifth generation of technology. They've put together a vision and uh, that vision contains a famous triangle. The triangle points in three different directions where the technology needs to be extended compared to the predecessors. And these three directions are better mobile broadband, massive machine time communications, and ultra reliable and low latency communications. So those are the, um, uh, the, the, this is the aspiration. So what we have learned here is that 5G is in, in uh, essence a communications technology. And as much as it uh, may, may seem obvious, it, the importance uh, of, of that statement is that this is not a technology designed for a particular application. Uh, it is not a media technology, it is not a navigation technology, it is not a telemetry technology. It is a technology that has an ambition to, to be applied in many different ways, but it is not optimized for any particular application. It could, however, be beneficial to media organizations, at least we believe so. However, the current deployments, so the commercial aspects, are focused on mobile broadband and telco-centric business models, and as such, they add some value to the media sector, but not a lot. It is therefore necessary to adapt 5G to the needs of the media organizations and their audiences, and that goes beyond pure technical performance. 5G luckily is still being developed, and therefore there is an opportunity for the media industry to influence these developments, both in technological and the regulatory uh, domain. You might be familiar with a, a number of uh, technical parameters or performance parameters uh, that were associated uh, with 5G. These parameters are uh, another uh, part, or that they are, they are specific, uh, a specific part of the, of the government ambition. So there are theoretical targets for the system performance, which are there to guide the research and the standardization, but also to uh, allow the ITU uh, to evaluate the candidate technologies. In practice, however, 5G networks won't be able to achieve all of these targets at the same time and everywhere. And in fact, currently there are no defined targets for the network performance. So we have the targets for the system performance, but not necessarily for the network performance. So what does this mean for the media sector? Here I've tried to depict in very simple terms the, the value chain of a media organization. So all the way from the content creation on the left to the user interface and, and, the, and the end user to the right. So our assessment at the EBU is that 5G will find its application in content creation, in the distribution of audiovisual content and services, and it will have a substantial impact on uh, the way that user devices are designed. In that respect, uh, it is worth noting that the uh, requirements in content production are rather different from those in content distribution. So. Um, we have looked in uh, many different use cases that, uh, where, where 5G could, in fact, play a role. We try to organize them into some, some uh, uh, more, more logical categories, such as news gathering, uh, live event broadcast, on-site live event. Uh, here, let me simply share a couple of learnings, a couple of, of insights that we have, we have uh, gained in that process. So first, 5G is a promising technology, and it could fit in the IP-based production workflows. As I said earlier, if left to the telecom industry, uh, 5G is unlikely to be able to meet the complex production requirements simply because it's designed and developed for a different purpose. Uh, the media community is involved, 
and needs to stay engaged in in the in the development in order to influence the standards and, and the regulation. Public networks, uh, those are the networks deployed by the uh, telecom operators. These are not very well suited for the demanding production use cases. However, they are quite adequate for some use cases, such as news gathering, radio contribution, single source video use cases, and the, and the likes. But 5G allows also uh, to be deployed in a, in a configuration that is, is called a non-public network, in other words, a private network. So for a particular purpose, you can build a network that uh, is configured according to your service requirements. These networks require new business models and require a stable re regulatory environment, including access to the spectrum. Uh, the content production industry uh, has got a, a range of demanding requirements that potentially could be met by the non-public networks, but these requirements uh, turn out to be quite similar to the requirements of other sectors or some other sectors, uh, for example, the industrial automation or, or medical sector. So when we talk to the regulators and to the industry, uh, it is useful to, to align our requirements to those of other sectors. Simply, the, it increases this, the overall size. And finally, 5G-based solutions will come gradually, uh, but they will not replace, no, certainly not in the short term, they will not replace uh, the conventional wireless production tools, the, 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 what is known as PMSC. Uh, and we believe they will coexist uh, for many years. What that means is that also the radio spectrum for PMSC that is currently used needs to be preserved in the long term. Let me now focus on, on, on 5G for content distribution. So the, uh, I'll, I'll ask three questions and try to answer them. The first question is, what service are we talking about? So there are many different types of services and uh, many broadcasters, most broadcasters today are offering pretty much all of them. They even integrate the user-generated content into their content. My second question is to what device a service needs to be de developed or de delivered. So the, here is the challenge. The challenge is to deliver the full range of content and services to all users. So what we have learned, and this is not new to, to uh, the audience, uh, that there is no single technology or a platform that can serve all use cases. For that reason alone, broadcasters use multiple distribution means. They always did. Doing this helps us extend the reach, but it also increases the complexity and the distribution costs. So uh, the question that comes to mind is, can 5G help? And the answer is, um, in a way, yes, but a tentative yes. Technically, 5G has the potential to bring many benefits. It can enable new services, it can ex uh, extend the reach, it can reduce the complexity, it can increase the flexibility, it can potentially also reduce the distribution costs. But that uh, will only happen under the right conditions. And those conditions are not yet there, they are not yet in place. We need sufficient coverage and capacity of 5G networks. We need equipment to be available and user, uh, users to adopt and to use the equipment. We need a, a suitable regulatory framework and business models, and those need to be compliant with the media regulation. We also need to make sure that 5G is affordable for the broadcasters and uh, for the end users. Now, we have looked at the, uh, the broad topic of 5G for the distribution of audiovisual media content, and we have written a, a report about it. So I invite you, if you want to know more, uh, please have a look. That brings me to my conclusions for today. So my first conclusion is that 5G may provide opportunities to the media sector. And these opportunities can only be realized under the right conditions. 5G could play a role in content production and in the distribution, but in both uh, cases will have to meet broadcaster service requirements rather than the service requirements being adjusted or being reduced in order to meet the capabilities of the technology. We have observed that the mainstream 5G is centered on 
telco's business model, so the telecom operator's business models, and as such offers a limited value to media companies. There is a possibility, however, to influence those developments, but the stakeholders from the media sector need to continue to engage with the telecom industry, with the regulators and the policy makers. Uh, if all you want to do is best effort streaming, audio streaming, uh, streamed radio, then um, our view is that the user experience on 5G will be very similar to the, that on, on 4G. And 4G networks are already there, so you don't need to wait for 5G to do that. And uh, as, as I know, uh, all broadcasters, especially radio broadcasters, are streaming their services on, on uh, mobile networks already. Technically, however, 5G can also provide a guaranteed quality of service. But that would require a viable business models, uh, and, and such business models are yet to be found. 5G will be a complement to the existing technology in the media sector, both in the production and in the distribution, and will coexist with those technologies for a long time. Therefore, the spectrum for terrestrial and satellite broadcast networks, as well as for PMSC, will need to be retained. And finally, um, these are still early days. Uh, we expect 5G networks and services to be rolled out in the coming decade. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll be happy to answer any questions that might come.